Um, thank you all so much for coming to this. Uh, this is such a great turnout. Um, obviously, I mean, we didn't expect so many. We didn't. It's great. We, we um, forget. Unless you're all here to cr complain, which is, <laughs> that book sucked. Yeah, <laughs> don't say anything. Um, no, just go on Amazon and leave one-star reviews. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, my name is Katya D'Angelo. I own Bridgeside Books in Waterbury. Um, and we had Sarah last year when her uh, last book came out, Do I Know You? Um, and we wanted to do it again, and it was Sarah's idea to bring together the local in the mix. So thank you to Sam and his team. Um, they uh, have... Transformed. This beautiful space for us, um, and uh, it happens to be right in Sarah's town, which is fantastic. Wanted to bring some uh, some business down here, but then I thought, uh oh, we have a lister here who's probably taking notes, saying, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> So uh, for you, for those of you who don't know Sarah, um, she is a best-selling and award-winning novelist mm -hmm. of 19 books for adults and young adults, including The Cinderella Pact, which became the Lifetime original movie yeah. Lying to be Perfect, and Bubbles Unbound, which won the Agatha Award for Best First Mystery, and then that became a series. Um, she's a former newspaper reporter, and you probably know her better as the town clerk here in Middlebury, uh, Middlesex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Dr. Freud. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, by the way, we just had somebody move to this town, and her mother uh -oh. complained about the name. No. <laughs> she disapproves of the name Middlesex, and as we pointed out, it said it could be with more town, could be more sex. <laughs> so, so there you go. That's she would have been happier with Middle. Maybe she thought she was moving to Middlebury. See, see, my middle school was on Middlesex yes. Road, and as a middle schooler, let me tell you, that is <laughs> never-ending source. But the address was 69. Middle of course. Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, so, right, yeah, um, so I wanted to start this because uh, with a question about how this was inspired by your house buying experience, uh, because that's such a great story that you told me many months ago. Okay, well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight in this showery Wednesday. I really appreciate it. It's very heartening, and I know a lot of you are not voters, so uh, I especially appreciate that. Um, so the, uh, the people who are voters are going to be mighty concerned to find that uh, my husband and I ended up through totally legal means during my, <laughs> as a duly warned tax sale at my job, ended up with a log cabin on 11 acres here in Middlesex. Okay, I can hear the criticism. It's, it's, such, it's such a New England vibe, you know? Shoy. Um, anyway, it was because no one bid on it and there was a reason for that uh, that we discovered later when we removed eight tons of trash to dead dogs. And when I say we, I mean not me. I mean uh, Dorinda's husband David helped and uh, Charlie and there were, you know, a couple of heroin addicts living there. So it was just kind of a bad, sad scene. It, we tried to change the karma of the place after we fixed up a little bit by letting a family of eight that had lost their house in a fire live there for 18 months. So that was good. And then when another family lost their house in a fire, my husband and I lived there for about eight months. And that was very, very cold because there was no heat there. <laughs> but I, that's when I wrote We Love to Entertain. And, you know, I kept thinking, I kept thinking, what happens if you are an out-of-stater and you steal a prime piece of real estate out from under a renegade Vermonter and you go missing? Um, <laughs> And that's the book. <laughs> yeah. And it's also the house. The cabin is haunted. Um, and if and and we don't won't get into that. I don't want to you know. But I can talk to you about it later. But it's true. It's it's definitely. Um, I mean, somebody died there. So it's. But I think we've purged it. So really. Yeah. Oh great. Yeah. I think she got sick of us. You know. <laughs> so that was it. She saw the light. She saw the. Light. So you, she saw you the scared away the ghost. I scared away the ghost. Awesome. But I, I wrote that in this you know this attic like room there. I wrote this book this entire time and so I got a little bit too much into the weeds about Vermont and tax sales and my poor editor in New York was like you know wherever you go don't mention tax sales no one cares you know but 
that's not true. Wove it into a room. I've tried to weave it. I tried to make it sexy. <laughs> like I, somebody gave me a good review. She's a former reporter who's, and I think her review is something like, if you really like going through town records, you're going to love this book. <laughs> No, you're not doing me any favors. <laughs> this is for a very small cut or a quarter. So what part of Kim's experience mirrors your own as town clerk? Because well, there is a character in this that is a Yes, clerk. there is a, um, the, the long and short of it is that there is a town clerk and she has a daughter who is working for the celebrity couple because this is her ticket out of town. And uh, of course, bad things happen to the daughter after the celebrity couple go missing, you know, mm -hmm. and poor, poor Kim is trying to keep everything together, but Kim's not completely on the honest and the up and up either. And so that was where I'd like to correct the record for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am on the up and up as much as I possibly can be. I just want to assure all Middlesex voters that. Uh, there are a few stories. Uh, I don't know if the animal control officer is here. Oh, is Erica here? Is Eric? No, Eric, oh there, hi Marika. Oh. There's somebody who was an inspiration for this book. Um, my former assistant town clerk. But uh, yeah, so a couple of things, and well, I told I just got off a road trip, but 1,300 miles on my car this weekend, mm -hmm. and I know, it was horrible. Wow. And the story that everybody liked uh, in other parts of the world, and I know this is, you guys will understand this, is like mud roads, they're like oh, yeah. mud roads, right? Mm -hmm. And then we say, well, you know, we, have, we did have this, I have this scene in this book about this runaway goat and we did have this runaway goat in Middlesex. Look at see the nodding? <laughs> And do you remember? Do you remember how the runaway goat was caught? No, but I remember everybody was out looking for it. Everybody was out looking. Saw him one day. <laughs> there you go. And it was it was bad news because people were doing the wrong thing. They were bringing food, and food was not going to get this goat. Right? What did you need? Does anybody know? You needed a rag soaked in nanny goat urine and Erica was like don't anybody touch the goat as soon as any of you see the goat Erica is the best animal control officer she says I'm gonna get out there with my pickup truck and I'm just all I need is a bucket of nanny goat urine and oddly enough that's easy to get and she stood there I'm trying to think who else she was with maybe Sarah Steedman I'm trying to think of who else it was but there was somebody at the end of the driveway and they took this thing and it stinks to high heaven and they winged it over there and, oh, God. and the goat was standing on top of the shed and and it just went oh <laughs> it went boom bing 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 but rich and that's how she got it we didn't have as much luck with lucky do you remember lucky the pig does anybody here remember lucky the pig oh you don't oh come on you got to remember maybe i remember it because it was the first snow in november and every other town in the in the five town school district was fine, had absolutely no snow, except for Middlesex. Middlesex had snow. And the phone was ringing off the hook, left and right, left and right. You know, people wanted the snow plow to accompany the school bus to Romney. It was just a whole thing. In the course of that, I got a call from the state police saying, you gotta do something about this goddamn pig. I said, what pig? A pig was being, it was in the back of a truck, going off to slaughter, and he jumped out on 89, right there. <laughs> And there were cars sliding all over the road. And they were trying to avoid this pig. And the road was like icy. And this pig was going back and pig on ice. And so, and I swear to God, I swear to God that. It's the, true, Sarah. It is true. Thank you, Marika. Marika was there. That the dispatcher said to me, Well, you got to do something because we can't shoot it. We can't have pigs shooting pigs. <laughs> Lucky remained elusive for like 18 months, and then I think of on a, on a feral, like on a walkabout. But you know they do go feral. You know they do, but he did not go feral. There was like a, a father and daughter hunting one day, and Lucky showed up, and they just took him back and to the place in Berlin, and you know uh, he was he was fine supposedly. Lucky. He was lucky. Fine for a while. Wow. Yeah, I know this. There, this is only like the tip of the iceberg of the story. And the rest of them I can't t ever tell. So, that <laughs> so, so um, how do you feel about writing about kind of this personal 
you know, this job of yours in a small town, like, what, you know, what's right. that like? Well, what I think the, to your world? the weird thing is talking to everybody here mm. who has been, you know, inspirations in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Because when you're going away, nobody knows anything. They don't, you know, you could tell them anything. Like, I was, I was just telling Katya that this woman at this conference said to me that she was, oh, she loved Vermont. Everybody at the conference loved Vermont. I love Vermont. <laughs> it's so precious. <laughs> it's so sweet. I'm like, yeah. Um, <laughs> And she said, uh, and so I can tell this crowd, right, you guys. And uh, she said, this summer, uh, my husband and I are going uh, to Vermont. I said, oh, where? And she says, Vorjean. I said, Vorjean? Where is Vorjean? And she said, you know, Vorjean. <laughs> and I realized, who did, does anybody know what it is? Vergenz. <laughs> And of course, I being the hick, I'm like, for sure, it's for Jens, you know. <laughs> and then I put on my boots, put on my mucklucks, and walked out the door. <laughs> Uh, the hick, the hick thing, it never ends. That's funny. Yeah. Thanks to Charlotte. I, was, uh, we, I went through that. And I think by this time, her eyes were beginning to glaze over. It's like, and if you see a town that's C-A-L-A-I-S, it's actually Calais. Cal is not Calais. She's like, okay, I get it, you know. Great, you guys are ignorant. You are Charlotte, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I also... Anytime there's a question, just you know, pop in. Yeah, you know, this is very conversational. Right. Um, so, okay. I my other my next question is, how do you really feel about all of the HGTV reality <laughs> shows? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, that's the other thing talking to this crowd. Like, a lot of people don't even have cable. So it's like, you know, right. right? And some woman wrote me and she said, she said, when I saw that it had a reality show and it was like bummed, you know? So I. It's not that different from like the old school. Um, uh, this old house. This like old house, PBS, yes, the PBS. You know? For that's those of you. more. I don't know, don't I don't know. I think I. Think I um, it, you know, part of the fun for me was doing the culture clash, was having people coming from away. And I do, um, let's just put it this way. Do you see this beautiful carpentry here? <laughs> this is all done by a carpenter in the valley. And every once in a while, I get meet people who are building from the valley. And you know, they are building outrageously expensive homes. You know, they are building patios that are worth my house. Can you attest to that, Linda? Yes. <laughs> right? And so I just like the image of those people coming in and taking some land and the and then, you know, you can't trust us. I like the idea of Vermonters not being trustworthy. I think, you know, we're, we're just a little squirrely. <laughs> I say looking at Lee. What is HD TV? See, this proves my point. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it was, it was uh, the original name is Home and Garden Television, but it morphed into something that is really addictive, where it'll have House Hunters or House Hunters International. And during the pandemic, it was really important to a lot of us because we could go to places that we hadn't, you know. Uh, we could think about, well, let's see, if I had $500,000 to buy an apartment in Paris, you know, what, I don't think I'd choose that one, you know, they give you three. And um, the idea of we love to entertain is that these couples, this is the other thing about HGTV, you have these young couples, you know, my daughter's age, and somehow they're walking around with like, we only have $800,000 to put down on a house. They're like, who are these people? Because do they have student loans? And what kind of jobs do they have? I don't know. They're your niece. Yeah. Oh, well, now we know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then they justify this expense for this incredible kitchen or this outdoor patio by saying, yes, but we love to entertain, as though they are <laughs> special people, right? The rest of us don't like anyone, so we're not going to spend $40,000 on a refrigerator, which you can do, that has a built-in coffee maker and television. Yeah, <laughs> and it'll notify you on your lawn milk. Will it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Do you know this? Why do you have one in Waterbury? <laughs> I'm not putting something like that in my 1800s apartment. <laughs> <laughs> the whole house will collapse, but that refrigerator will still be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's no, it'll like keep it. <laughs> so that's perfect. Yes? Um, Sarah, when you, in the story, um, used that whole sort of uh, the, the subplot of the people on Reddit, I think it was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, did you have to research? Is that what people do, like, on these shows? Yeah, like, absolutely. They so did. How did you research? I just want to identify Liz Sharp. Liz Sharp is the. <laughs> is the person from your elementary school who did all the homework and then sat in class and can answer all the questions.
questions. Um, she is also our, our, our most hardworking select board member. So uh, just to answer that question, yes, while you're filling out grants, other people are on Reddit. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's what's really true. happening in real life. On in real life, show? yes, like, they, yeah, they, it's like they can't leave. They've just got to constantly be in contact. And yeah, so that's it. What is Reddit? It's, 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 it's almost like from Porch Forum, only oh, it's constant. It, yeah, and, and rude. And yes, and, and rude. Snarky. Oh, and yeah. snook, snarky and rude. And non-censored. Yes, yes, also true. Yeah. The, the HGTV Dream Home was in yes, Vermont, it, I think. The most, while I was writing the book, it was in, yeah. uh, in well, Waitsville. Warren, Warren, Warren yeah. right. Oh, like, yeah, and there is a really energy uh, sufficient. It looked like this. Too. It did. There was a, <laughs> there's a, there's a house I used a lot down there in Warren there like it's got the rubber roof and it's got you know this couple thinks they're being virtuous because they're building something that is environment no offense that's environmentally uh, efficient <laughs> and while the other couple is you know they're they're uh, they're a gay married couple and they're bringing in teenagers who have been bullied to, to their ranch and the other couple are people who are in health care who are building bringing a retreat for people who have been suffered during COVID but these people are building a huge energy efficient home um, and for that they should win because they're so virtuous <laughs> but I'm just I mean these biases I do not extend to my job I just want you to know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so Snowden um, Snowden yes is the town that this yeah. takes place in um, and I from some of the details that you put in there it's further south than where we are was mm -hmm. there a specific I'm thinking of like Peru, like down there, okay. you know, a place you really can't get to, yeah. right? Yeah. From here. From here. Yeah. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Exactly. that was fun. The National Forest is a giveaway. Yes, yeah. Yes, sure, right. Sure, sure. Oh my good, good for you. You read it too. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Thank you. She's part of the Birdside Book Club. Oh. Yeah, so and my husband's a there. state park ranger. So oh, that's very know. cool. That's sure. really neat. I bet he has stories, right? Oh boy. Yeah. Mm. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of dead, a lot of dead characters down there. Yeah. Dense characters. Well, dead or dense. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we so, hope. Yeah, that's true. Um, so the, that that was like a little detail that was really lovely, and I found that this is your first book set in Vermont. Yes, and probably my last. Really? Yes. Oh, why? Well. I don't know, you know, one and done. I, I think um, my next book is going to be inspired by Vermont. It's going to be inspired by a situation that we had. Not is anybody here from Worcester? Good. <laughs> I know this is going to go on Orca, but so no one from Worcester, Worcester will watch it. So one day, Katie Winklejohn, who is the town clerk in uh, Worcester, and now she is the town treasurer and she lives in Mexico. Go figure. Nice setup, right? Okay. She calls me up on a Monday and she says, uh, she said, uh, do you have a marriage certificate for a guy named, hold on, Arthur McBeath? And I said, oh, come on, no. And she said, yeah, he's married to, it was like something like Pais, Paisley Wingding. And I was like, okay, oh, sure. And sure enough, I do. I have a marriage certificate for them. And I said, why do you need it? And she says, because I got to put together a death certificate. I said, town clerks put together a death certificates? And she said, when they, they do, when things are as fucked up as this. <laughs> so I said, all right, what happened? And she said, well, it all started when Arthur McBeath had a, she said, do you know that he has a druid compound up on at the at the Middlesex uh, Worcester town line. Did you guys know that? Yes. yes. You did? I, I, well, there's druids also in Calais. Yeah. And it's but Calais. Calais. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently it was the uh, it was the autumn equinox and there were many many visitors coming to Arthur McBee's Druid compound that has a mini Stonehenge up there. And it was an incredibly warm weekend and Arthur was closing in on 500 pounds. And he drops dead of a heart attack. True story all of this. And his wife says, I need to go to a cleansing bath ritual and leaves. And the people who are there say, let's burn them. Oh. <laughs> nice cultic ritual. Seriously? Oh Seriously. So they put him on a pyre <laughs> and they make a festival of this and it is closing in now on 86, 90 degrees. Oh so that was Thursday when he died. Oh my God. Friday he's getting a little right. 
And meanwhile, um, poor Katie is trying to call the authorities and saying, well, we don't have a funeral home involved. What do I do? And they say, well, actually, statutorily, it is the town clerk's responsibility to put together a death certificate. <laughs> so she's running up and down, going down to the cleansing stream to talk to the wife, get that information, all that, going, getting all this information. Saturday night, she's at home. Uh, as she says, it's beer o'clock, and she gets a call from a friend of hers who's up at the Druid compound because, of course, they don't have any cell phones up there. And she says, you got to get here now. It's a total cluster. So she <laughs> runs up there. What's the problem? The problem is that there is a fight among the Druids. <laughs> one, half, one half just wants to light the torch and set them on fire. Others have said, no, 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 I've been to India, you got to stab him first. Oh, <laughs> because otherwise he's just going to explode. Oh, <laughs> oh, like a potato. Oh, like a potato. Oh, <laughs> and so by this time, Katie says, you know, enough, enough. We're not going to do this, we're not going to stab this corpse, and we're not going to explode the world by lighting him on fire. So she starts calling around trying to find any type of crematorium that will take him, and there's apparently one in Northfield that will do it no matter what. You know this, don't you? <laughs> Corroboration. Corroboration. And so, you know, that story of the Druid compound's been in the back of my mind. <laughs> And I really do like cults, and I, and I have to tell you, I just finished this book called Cults, mm -hmm. surprise, and it's about cults, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all nonfiction. Yeah. So if you really want something to listen to that's fun in a 1,300 mile car ride, you know, I recommend this highly. So that's going to be the inspiration, but I'm not going to set it in Vermont, I'm going to set it in New Hampshire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So okay. So you said it in Vermont, and I have to say the the I want to say like world building of like really making it feel. Oh good. Like, that was so. Just like little details. Oh thank you. I hope people who don't live here. Yeah. Can. I don't know, understand and like, oh wow, that like this. Good. You know, who knows? It's going to be the people who really enjoy going through town records. There <laughs> <laughs> will suddenly be an uptick of people coming to look for right. Yeah, or like auctions, like housing. Yeah, auctions, tax you know? sales. Like, yeah, oh, right, right. Here. Okay. Mm. Um, any other questions? Questions? Can you give me an example of that? Not the auction stuff, just the little details. Oh goodness! My God! Now um, she's being. No, you're about to put her on the. Are you putting I her on the I spot? Read, I read this in six hours on a yeah. plane. Oh my gosh! Okay, That's okay, never mind. It was look. I mean, like I read it so quickly. But it was such, such a great thing. Um, yeah. Things like well, things like the dirt road stuff. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, mud, yeah. Um, yeah. The deer. The deer, totally. Like uh, the deliveries, like how they don't show up because you are so oh, good. Yeah, okay. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So like little things. Like, the country yeah. store. Uh -huh. Check. Thank you. Yeah. People who wear many hats. Yeah. The guy who knows everyone and yeah. like knows Erica's past and like yeah. you know yeah. kind of. Yeah, that's a key her. part. You can't when you live in a small town. You can't get away from your past. That yeah. is true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I love Waterbury, but sometimes it feels. A little small. <laughs> and that's a big town. That's a <laughs> big town. Um, uh, let's see, what other questions do I have for you? Um, do you, yeah, I don't know, do you, do you guys know about this book? This is the other book oh, I wrote? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, this is 18 out of the 19. Mm -hmm. So just to just give you some uh, background on this, I'm just going to tell you this because I have to go to the uh, Northshire bookstore for a very fancy weekend this weekend. Ooh. with I know, with literary writers, I don't know what I'm doing there, but people are paying $200 <laughs> a head, so that's it. Ooh, so that's we're, nice. we're supposed to do something kind of funny or funky, and they said, you know, if you want to read a avant-garde poem or something, but I'm not, oh, gosh. I'm going to dress up up as my original character Bubbles. Oh. <laughs> and I haven't I haven't put I haven't squeezed into that outfit in 20 or so years, but I ordered the wig off Amazon and I, I got the leopard print bra uh, and I got the see-through thing so I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm going to bring down the real estate in Manchester. <laughs> And I'm going to talk to them about the, the fact that that book, do, I don't know if you know this, that I'm on the terrorist watch list. I have recently been uh, freed from the terrorist watch list. Yay. 
Thank you. <laughs> Whoever wrote you know, letters, thank you very much. Um, and part, Bubbles was all part of that because while I was on the terrorist watch list, they would, you know, like I'd go to Southwest and you'd stand in line, they'd open up your luggage right in front of everybody and they'd pull out all your oh, stuff right. and they'd pull out the bra and the wig and I was reading uh, Jennifer Weiner's Good in Bed and people are walking by <laughs> and everywhere I went. But during that course of that, I also learned about when I was in Heathrow being detained, I learned about super recognizers, which is what the British have used with the IRA forever, which are people who never forget a face, but also can see, you know, how people walk and move and, you know, it is interesting. And they were laughing at us because we take off our shoes. Um, they said, no, 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 we've got plants all over the place. These people, we cultivate them. And so I put that away. And so this is a, this has a super recognizer and it, I think I'm going to tie it. I think that's a justification for wearing a Bubbles outfit, don't you? Yeah. If not, just to shock them. Chris Bajalian will be like, oh, never coming back again. <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned Chris. He came into the store yesterday. Oh, he did. And and just out of curiosity, after he left, yeah, uh, we looked up our sales for you versus Chris, and guess who wins? Uh-huh. You know what? You have just made my life. No, uh, <laughs> I, no like not kidding. You. Thank you so much, Katya. That's <laughs> If my mother were alive, I could call her and say, see, I never had to get that master's degree like you want. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is going to sound like a criticism, and I promise it's not. That's OK. I got um, thick skin. <laughs> you have to if you're a time I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, in, in the course of the character development, and kind of bracketing the fact that, that Kim has your job in the fictional world um, and how you might relate to her. I'm wondering how you feel about your characters because I found that Tammy was the only one I liked. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. <laughs> it probably is too bad. I, I'm going um, I'm to go home now. Tammy is. <laughs> Tammy is the one from Florida. She's the, oh, uh, right. she's yeah. Haley's mother. Right. Yes. How do you connect like to your characters? And, and well, ones? obviously, I guess I'm you a secret like bitch. <laughs> I think that's probably, <laughs> so I, I think that that's probably the psychological thing that we've uncovered. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I, I did take a break from therapy, but I'm going to go back. <laughs> You know, who likes stuff? Who doesn't like stuff? You know, I read books with lots of unlikable characters. I love them. My husband hates them. You know, I watch shows with unlikable characters. I always, I like, I personally liked Kim, but that's okay. Sorry. I did love Tammy, though. I wish she was my favorite. Sorry. I really liked Doreen. I really liked Doreen. I, I just, yeah. I thought she was such a, yeah. I don't know, whippersnapper. She is a whippersnapper. <laughs> and, her, and, her, and her inspiration is here today. I, you know, I Would Doreen ask. please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> the real Doreen, please stand up. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> well, and I was so happy to read the note at the end about how yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> She's not like Doreen, awesome. but she kind of is. Because <laughs> well, the whole book, I'm, I'm like, oh my god, she actually worked with someone like this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to just tell you one quick story. There was, uh, when I first got this job, Marika was the assistant clerk, and she was there before I was. And, uh, you know, Marika just... Marika knows everything and she's the most capable human being on earth. And so we used to close the office for lunch and we close the office and we're working together and we look through the door and we see this little guy like covered in tats, all muscled and we think, oh crap, it's finally happened, right? He's, we're we're going to be held up, right? Oh. <laughs> and so Marika and I sit here and we conspire. Okay, look at Marika's like, really I can take him. You make a joke. <laughs> you go off for distraction. I can take him. You know, I think she's got a baseball. Did you have a baseball bat? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know the bookkeeper had a gun. I mean, this guy looks so bad. He looks so gnarly. So we're ready, right? I'm like, oh, I'm going to go in the vault and close the vault. And then we have all this. We, we're like working ourselves into a lather. At least I'm working myself into a lather. Mike is probably like, good. You know, if she gets blown away, I'm going to go out the door. Who cares? <laughs> so we, um, he comes in, and it turns out he is an undercover investigator for the Social Security in, uh, Administration. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, there are undercover investigators for Social Security Administration? Yeah. yeah. And he has a really big territory. I mean, it's like from Congress. Massachusetts to the Canadian border so you don't see him too much but if you see this guy coming up your driveway and you've been fudging your disability benefits go look out so we do have 
we do have moments like that in the town clerk's office, you know. Yeah. Here I thought he was from Berlin. Berlin. <laughs> but I can say that because I live there. You can. <laughs> Berlin. Yeah, we I've Some only people say Berlin, others say Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> it's an endless debate, but we know it's not, you know, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the one town where people don't know how to pronounce. I think you're probably right. But you don't live in Bar. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and if you ever watch Investigation Discovery and you watch any, there's a couple of murders there, they always say, in the in the quiet town of Bar, Vermont. I'm like, yeah. Bar, Vermont? Uh-uh. <laughs> Auntie Churchill recently also mispronounced Charlotte. Did they? Yeah, they said, oh, down the road in Charlotte. Yeah. But everyone in the theater was like, oh, Charlotte. <laughs> Well, you know, I have to. I have the great pleasure of actually uh, auditioning the, the people who do the audiobooks. This is really fun. Harper Collins gives me, you know, three or four uh, readers for each one, and says, you know, they give me a little test tape and stuff. Um, it is fun. It's really mean? fun. I didn't know you had like authors had any. I have more input in that than I do in the cover. I just kind of yeah, it's really interesting. And uh, we had to give them. So then they returned with a list of how do we pronounce these things, and it was it's huge. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. What do you look for or listen for? I listen for something that matches the voice in my head. Oh, that's yeah. Fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we're yeah. all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah. So now I gotta ask, how do you feel about the cover since you don't have much say in that? You know, they're dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very genre. Is it? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you look at like the shelves and the mystery thrillers and yeah. stuff versus yeah. like, yeah. well, obviously rom coms or even fantasy, mm -hmm. there's a look, there's always a the look. look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, right. So I wanna look like Colleen Hoover and I wanna have the name Colleen Hoover. Could that work? <laughs> <laughs> No. You can always change your name. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I, she'd come right after me. Those romance types, they really are copyright fanatics. So, I hate to keep you guys here in this dark, in this uh, you know, building. What are, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we're at um, about six fifteen. -ish. Okay, great. Um, question, uh, more questions, more thoughts. Any? Yeah. Good. How did you end up being town clerk? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. Mm. Um, I mean, <laughs> my husband wants credit, but he's not going to get it. Um, so, I, I mean, uh, I left my job, and that is a whole story as a newspaper reporter. I had a, I had a, a job, I was uh, working at the State House free, uh, for the Valley News and writing a book on the side. And I, at the time, I had this incredible. Um, incredible rape case that I dealt with in Barnard and I was, it's the only time I've ever had a letter of reprimand put in my files because I let the rape victim read the story, which was not allowed. Um, but the, but what, she, what she went through was, was so horrific, I'll be glad to tell you about it some other time, but it was horrible. I don't want to trigger anybody. And um, the editor came over, up to my office and gave me a letter of reprimand and took me out to lunch. But I'll st I stick by my decision. I didn't want her to be victimized twice. I'd rather, you know, screw it. And as he was walking down the stairs, my phone rang, and it was Heather, my agent. She was no longer my agent, thank God. And Heather literally talks like this. Oh, it's Heather. <laughs> I see him. And um, she's about this high. And uh, she said, I just got you a book deal. You can quit your job. You know, I was like the universe. So I quit my job, and I wrote books, and raised kids, and did all that. And then the kids went to college, and I was stuck home alone, and I realized a couple of things. I realized I have no health insurance. I realized that I am getting batty just sitting in this. And I needed a new infusion of, I just needed, you know, I just need to be part of the community. You know, you, you're really isolated as a writer. It's an incredibly isolating thing. So there was a town clerk opening. I, you know, they interviewed for it. The person who interviewed me was right here. And she, one of her questions was, uh, this is Mary Skinner, do you do housekeeping? <laughs> Yes, you did. It was like a little test. Do I do housekeeping? And I lied and said, sure, and thought I'll never wiping a toilet down here in my life. So um, that's not true. I ended up wiping them lost. So, the, uh, so that's how I became town clerk. And I really ended up really liking the job. It, it, it combines all the skills and also taught me skills. You know, it taught me how to be a little bit more organized and to, to 
uh, treat everybody with respect right. because you're going this is Lee who's a former town clerk and this is uh, Rosie who was a current town clerk in East Montpelier so they know what I mean and you get all types who come in and you just you just have a sense of humor about every single one of them and some of them can be kind of rude during the 2020 uh, election the aftermath of the 2020 elections I had a couple of wise guys uh, my favorite one was a guy who came in for the 2022 general election and he said I'm gonna be there at 6 a.m. and I'm gonna to watch voting I'm gonna watch what you do with that Dominion voting machine and I said we'll be there <laughs> he showed up five minutes before the polls closed oh. <laughs> three sheets to the wind <laughs> and very happy <laughs> So, you know, there's all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think it's a real privilege. I think it's one of the best jobs. It's, uh, yesterday was like town clerk, National Town Clerk Day. Was that right, Rosie? Did you see that? I was on vacation this week. I must have. <laughs> and uh, as one of the town clerks pointed out, it's the second oldest profession. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> So I mean, it's a great honor. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it wow. is. It's a, it's a wonderful job. That's great. Um, any more questions? Otherwise, we can kind of wrap it up. And uh oh, yeah. here's Kim. Here's another Kim. Uh -oh. So, Bubbles was your first book, right? Well, no. Barbie. Depends on how you define book. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie Unbound, a parody of the Barbie obsession. Yeah. A high quality book in itself. It's now, it's now back in fashion, yes. That was going to be my question. Do you find that as each book comes out, that it rekindles interest in some of your old books? And did you ever imagine that 20 something years down yeah. would be this? Because I seem to remember a certain sixth grade graduation where oh God. The parents all got a parting gift of the book Bubbles. Uh -huh. Is that what I did? That's what you did. That's pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about when I delivered the U32 graduation dressed as bubbles. <laughs> I mean, you remember that? I was just telling somebody the other day, uh, I was at this mouse convention, that I did, a, I did a, a reading at the Barnes & Noble in Salem, New Hampshire, which is across from a racetrack, and I was dressed up like bubbles, big wig, everything like that. And I, somebody reported me to the store manager. They said there's a hooker at the back of the store. <laughs> I was so flattered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I just want to say Barbie on Barbie on Bound is brilliant. <laughs> It, oh, it, thank you. That's this is this. She's related to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean she's your I've I've actually wondered, um, being from the Lehigh Valley where yes. Bubbles makes her home, and I've always wondered: do people who are not from the Lehigh Valley think it's as completely hysterically funny as anybody who knows that area does? I absolutely love those. Oh, no thank you. On them at all. Yeah, you know I. I don't, I don't know. I'm I'm from the Lehigh Valley, so I don't know. I have a weird I have a weird Pennsylvania following. I just went out of my way in this torrential rainstorm on on Friday or something to go sign some books in Pennsylvania. You know, not that much has changed down there. It's not every, nothing changes down there. Frankly, it gets built up, but you know, it's got the same mentality. You know, who are you to who are you to think you're so special? <laughs> so yeah, I, I I don't know. I miss it. Bethlehem's nothing like that anymore. It's all yeah, yeah. You know, steel town, pink walled hair salons my mother used to go to religiously. The day my mother died, she the week before my mother died, she kept saying, "Call my hairdresser, call call Bonnie, call Bonnie, call Bonnie." And she was in a stroke, and I was like, "Where the? Why do I need to call Bonnie? Bonnie, this is in Alaska, was out fishing, so of course, she's like, she'll come back on Saturday when she's done. All right." I was like, "Mom, what are you gonna do?" She's like, "It's my hairdresser. I got to get my hair done. I got to make." Of course, she was taking the greatest trip ever, but it was uh, that's like that generation hairdressers. You had your standing, oh, yeah. Yeah. right? You guys know. Yeah. And if you had your Friday 2 p.m. appointment, yeah. you did not miss your Friday 2 p.m. Yeah. appointment. You bought Christmas gifts for your hairdresser and their kids and their grandkids. My great wash and set. My great aunt was a hairdresser in Bethlehem. <gasps> Karma. <laughs> I don't know how we didn't talk about this before. I didn't know you were from Bethlehem. Isn't that wild? It's totally wild. Everyone's from Bethlehem. They're, they're very, very funny, but I never know. Are they so funny because you know all the people in there? Yeah, I don't know. They're probably not that funny. You're just... They're pretty funny. They're, very, um. yeah. <laughs> they're pretty funny. 
be funny. <laughs> I don't know. Men read them sometimes. I read five of them in a row when my really? when my dad was so sick because I just oh. needed to be happy. Oh, and I that's good. So happy. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to thank you guys yeah. so much. This has been by far the most fun event. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> and I hope you, I just, I just want to give you a credit to Bridgeside Books. It's a wonderful, wonderful bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. A really, really yeah. Oh, and they are, they're, they're great. They're receptive. They're, they got a cool stuff going on. It's in a cool area. I highly recommend it. And please, please partake of the local. Mm -hmm. Please go down there and buy yes. um, your book. Yes, and or else you can buy the book. I can take credit cards and cash. With you. Um, right. Wine glasses. There's a tray just outside the door. If you could put your wine glasses on yeah. that, um, and then there is a bathroom. There's a door right there. That is actually a bathroom <laughs> door. There's also a bathroom um, in the Red Hen like hallway area. Right. Um, but yeah, and you're here to sign books. So. I'm here to sign books or whatever. And I want to thank you so much for coming. This is so much fun. This is great. Thanks. It was really fun.